Welcome to another week of Agile Practices. Today, I'm going to cover an essential aspect of managing an Agile project, tracking progress. Specifically, I will focus on how burn up and burn down charts help ensure that projects stay on course and that teams maintain their velocity to meet their goals. Tracking progress in Agile is critical for transparency. Agile teams rely on being open about what's happening at every stage of a project. By tracking progress, I refer to actively monitoring the team's velocity, how quickly work is being completed, and ensuring the project's scope doesn't expand unnoticed. Without effective tracking, teams may assume they're on track, only to discover later that they've fallen behind. This is where burn-up and burn-down charts come into play. These tools provide a clear picture of completed tasks, remaining work, and whether the project is on track to meet its deadlines. Now, let's look at what burn-up and burn-down charts are. Both of these charts offer a visual representation of progress. A burn-up chart tracks the amount of work completed over time, while also reflecting any changes to the project's scope. This dual function makes it particularly useful for monitoring how much work has been accomplished and how the scope has evolved over time. For example, if new tasks are added, the burn-up chart reflects those changes alongside the team's progress, offering a full overview. Conversely, the burn-down chart focuses on the amount of remaining work. It shows how quickly tasks are being completed and provides insight into whether the remaining work can realistically be finished within the sprint or project timeline. As tasks are completed, the line on a burndown chart moves downward towards zero, which signifies that all planned work has been completed. If the line flattens, it signals a potential delay or slowdown in progress. While each chart serves a different purpose, they complement each other well. Burn-up charts are ideal for tracking progress while managing scope changes. They allow teams and stakeholders to see how much work has been completed and how much has been added or modified. This makes them especially useful when project scope changes frequently. In contrast, burn-down charts provide a focused view of how much work remains and how quickly it is being completed. These charts are valuable for predicting whether the team will complete the work on time, and they help identify potential delays early. When used together, burn-up and burn-down charts give a complete view of project progress, balancing scope changes with task completion. Typically, the creation and upkeep of burn-up and burn-down charts fall to the scrum master or product owner who is responsible for tracking progress. In some cases, other team members may manage the charts, but it's crucial that the data is updated regularly. Both charts are used by multiple roles within Agile projects. Development teams use them to monitor progress and stay aligned with sprint goals. Stakeholders rely on them for visibility into project status without needing to get into technical details. Product owners and project managers use these charts to inform decisions about adjusting scope, timelines, or resources. When looking at a burn-up chart, the vertical axis represents the total amount of work, measured in story points, tasks, or hours. The horizontal axis tracks time, either by days or sprints. One line represents completed work, rising as tasks are completed, while another line represents total scope. If the scope changes, the chart reflects it, making burn-up charts valuable for tracking both progress and scope changes simultaneously. For burn-down charts, the vertical axis shows remaining work, while the horizontal axis represents time. As tasks are completed, the line moves downward, ideally reaching zero by the end of the sprint, which means all planned work has been completed. This chart gives a quick view of how much work remains and whether the team is on track. To create these charts, first identify the total amount of work. Update the chart regularly, either daily or at the end of each sprint, to reflect completed tasks or story points. Over time, these updates will provide a clear visual of the project's progress. When interpreting a burn-up chart, the slope of the completed work line shows how quickly work is being done. A steeper slope indicates faster progress. This line should be compared to the total scope line. If the scope line moves upward, it suggests new tasks or features have been added to the project, signaling a scope change. Burn-up charts are especially useful for identifying scope creep, showing how new work impacts overall progress. For a burn-down chart, 
the focus is on the downward slope of the remaining work line. A sharp decline shows rapid progress, while a flattening line suggests the team is slowing down. The goal is for the line to reach zero by the end of the sprint, meaning all planned work has been completed. A delayed or flattening line signals potential issues that need to be addressed to keep the project on track. The data from burn up and burn down charts can be used in different ways, depending on the role. For teams, the charts provide a clear view of completed work and remaining tasks. They help assess whether the team is on track to meet sprint goals, which can be useful for daily stand-ups and tracking potential obstacles. For stakeholders, these charts provide transparency without overwhelming them with technical details. A quick glance at the charts helps stakeholders see if the project is progressing as expected or if changes to scope or delays have occurred. For product owners and managers, these charts help in making informed decisions about adjusting scope, timelines, or resources. They also aid in sprint and release planning by providing insight into the team's velocity, helping to set realistic expectations for future work. Both burn up and burn down charts are useful for estimating when a sprint or project will be completed based on the current rate of progress. By analyzing trends in team velocity, managers can better estimate how much work can be completed in future sprints. If the charts show progress slowing down, such as a flattening burn down line, managers may need to extend the sprint or reallocate resources to ensure the team completes all tasks. Similarly, if the burn up chart shows scope increases, this may indicate scope creep. In either case, adjustments will need to be made to keep the project on track. These charts provide data for making proactive adjustments, avoiding last-minute surprises. One common pitfall is relying too heavily on one chart. For example, depending only on a burndown chart might not provide a full picture if the project scope is constantly changing. In cases where new work is added or removed, a burndown chart won't reflect these changes, which could make it seem like the team is falling behind when they are simply handling more work. Burn-up charts are better for showing scope changes as they display both the work completed and the changes in total scope. However, burn-up charts also present challenges for teams focused on day-to-day -day progress as they show cumulative data that might obscure how much work remains in the sprint. This is why it's often best to use both charts together to get a more comprehensive view of the project's health and progress. Another potential issue is incomplete or inconsistent updates. The value of these charts lies in the accuracy of the data. If progress isn't tracked regularly, it can lead to incorrect assumptions about where the project stands, whether it's in terms of scope, velocity, or timeline. Regular updates ensure that the team is working with the most reliable information. That's all I have for you in this video. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.